Talkopolis, the social media TV network for your city. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into another edition of Player to Player. We are live on location at Drake's Cool Springs. My name, Brad Hopkins. The guy to my side actually is not Kane Harrison. <laughs> Who are you? Hey, I'm back, man. I'm back, brother. Derek Mason back, <laughs> back on the show here. Well, first off, where did you go? Where you been? Can't you tell by the tan? Yeah. Exactly. I've been, I've been to Mexico, man. Spring well, break. Spring you've been break. to Mexico for a long time looking at your tan. <laughs> <laughs> Did you enjoy yourself? It was nice. Me and uh, little Derek enjoyed ourselves. Nice. We had a bunch good. of fun. Well, you left us with a whole bunch of sports conversation to talk about over the weekend. A lot of excitement in NFL free agency. We'll get into that. Also, we'll have a conversation about the Sweet 16 and how that's kind of comprised. Tennessee finds himself. Boy, almost like a Cinderella story. Almost a Cinderella story in that they were a play-in uh, in the first round. They're playing against Iowa, and now they find themselves in the Sweet 16. That's actually a great conversation. We'll have that. Absolutely. As well as we'll talk about the NFL owners meeting that's set to take place in Orlando today. A lot of rules changes that might be on the horizon. We'll get Derek's take as well as mine on uh, what we think about those rule changes. But first off, let's get into free agency. Some, some guys have made some new homes for themselves. We find Hakeem Nix is now a, an Indianapolis Colt just up the street. Uh, Michael Vick finds himself backing up Geno Smith uh, in New York. Uh, DeMarcus Ware going to the Broncos, obviously an impactful pick. But let's focus on Michael Vick first off. Is this going to be, in your opinion, a quarterback battle, or is Geno Smith the far out and out starter for that G uh, New York Jets offense? Well, I think first, I think it was a great pickup by the New York Jets by acquiring a veteran quarterback like Michael Vick, who has been through the fire, who has been in big game, um, who has played on a big, big stage. Mm -hmm. um, to bring him to New York, they brought him in sort of, kind of, sort of as a mentor, but he understands that, listen, you're going against a young quarterback in his second year, so this job is up for grab. He didn't have a great season last year, meaning Geno Smith, um, and now you bring a veteran like Michael Vick, who has some very good seasons in the NFL. So is this an all and out uh, quarterback battle? I think so, but they're not going to portray it, the New York Jets. They're not going to portray it like that. And I, and I don't blame them because you don't want mm. to lose that confidence that you had in a young quarterback. So you kind of let it play out, see how it goes and at, the, at, at the beginning of the season. Then you pick your starter. But I think going in, I think Michael Vick understands that he's there as a mentor, but he's there to win a, win a starting job. I'm actually kind of excited at the potential of seeing him run Rex Ryan's offense. Not to say anything or, or no, no, no sort of personal indictment against Geno Smith. I thought he did a, a good job last year of basically learning the ropes on the fly. He did kind of have an up and down season, which is what you would kind of expect from a rookie. But to see Michael Vick and what he can actually do in an offense, I still believe that he is a starting quarterback in this league, and I'm sure that he believes that as well. So when you look at him possibly running uh, a team that could contend in the East, it's got to be exciting to see him at least get off Martin Eden, that's Foles, and try and have a resurgence in his career. Well, you, yeah, and you, you can't tell me that my, there are, what, 32 quarterbacks out mm. there starting quarterbacks? You can't tell me that Michael Vick is not better than at least 15 of them. And I think the New York Jets understood that. He was caught up in a situation where, where he, in Philly where he lost his starting job due to injuries. And the backup came in and played extremely well. So now he has to go to another team. So by him going to another team, now he gets a fresh start. He gets an opportunity to become a starting quarterback in this league like he, he, he's been previously right. in his first you know, five or six years in the NFL. So now he gets to go to the Jets, compete for a starting job with the young quarterback. And if he doesn't win it, what happens is he makes Geno Smith a better quarterback. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. But it's also something else you talked on. I don't think that it's Michael Vick's abilities that will keep him out of the conversation of being a starting quarterback, Derek. I think it's his ability to stay healthy. Yeah. Now, in my opinion, I thought Philadelphia had protection issues. We saw Nick Foles on a number of occasions when he did get the starting reign uh, running for his life, just like Michael Vick was at the beginning of that season. So if no one can keep him protected, Michael Vick is there subsequently. You know, he could be in danger. But when that guy is healthy, he is a playmaker, and he is yes. still almost as electric as he was when he was wearing the corn rolls with the Atlanta Falcons. <laughs> well, I mean, listen, you're going from a system that was a fast-paced system right. in, in Philadelphia. Then you go to a more slowed-down system with the New York Jets. Um, uh, Marty Moore, Morningwig, is that how you pronounce his name? Morningwig. Morningwig, excuse me, Morningwig. You go to a system like that where you don't put your quarterback in, in uncompromising positions. Mm. They're more so of a run-based team. So that would take a lot of heat off it, whether it be Michael Vick or Geno Smith. So I don't see Michael Vick being that that you know um, glass 
glass figure type man that um, that he was in in, in Atlanta right. and in Philadelphia. This is right. a guy that's going to be well protected, and they're going to use the running game to his benefit, whether it be Geno Smith or whether it be Michael Vick. All right, let's bring it back here to Nashville. Ryan Fitzpatrick signs a deal. As a matter of fact, it's an increase in pay to be the backup for the Houston Texans. Now, everyone knows that Houston has the number one pick in this year's draft. A lot of speculation as to who they might pick, whether it be Jadeveon Clowney, the, you know, a pretty highly touted defensive end, or could it be one of these young gun quarterbacks, one of these juniors that's coming out early, either a Teddy Bridgewater, uh, Blake Bortles, or even a Johnny Manziel from just up the street in A&M. So when we're talking about Ryan Fitzpatrick being a possible mentor, uh-huh. I mean, as he finds his way down there to Houston, could this be a possibility for him to maybe get on the field if, in fact, it doesn't work out for a guy and show his stuff, you know, for the Houston Texans versus the Tennessee Titans? Well, it could be. I mean, they, they already have quarterback situations down in Houston. I know Case Keenum came in and did a wonderful job spilling it for, for the incumbent Matt Shaw. Right. But that's, that's not their quarterback for the future. They're looking for a quarterback for the future. They bring in a, a Ryan Fitzpatrick, who's a veteran guy, who has had some good years, but then he's had some bad years as right. well. He's a turnover prone, but I think in a system that that, that 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 their coach wants to implement, it doesn't rely so heavily on a quarterback winning football game. From so they got Arian Foster, they got some other they got some other talent on that team that he can that the weight won't be on his shoulders to win right. the game. Whether it be a Ryan Fitzpatrick, whether it be a Case Keenum, or whether they draft a guy like Johnny Mazzell or David Carr, the the the, the the pressure would not be on the run, the, the quarterback to win the football game. It would be a one on their defense and then two on their running game. So I think it's a great pickup uh, for the Houston Texans. Now the thing is, did they get Ryan Fitzpatrick to be their quarterback for the next year or two and possibly draft a quarterback next year? Or did they get him to just be a veteran mentor to draft a quarterback in the first round and not draft a guy, a guy like Jadavian Clown? Great questions. But did you see what you did there? You okay. said David Carr. Yeah. That's Derek's brother. Yeah, Derek the one that Carr. Got drafted a I'm long sorry. Time ago. <laughs> that actually would be pretty cool if he were to get drafted by the same team that his brother did to even start the franchise. I'm sure that. And is. then what can happen is here, David Carr didn't start out so well, but Derek Carr can come in and kind of, you know, kind of make up for what his brother didn't do. Where in one, Houston. where one of the car boys started, the other car boy can finish. Can finish. Yeah. It's like oh, wow. passing up a time. I'm smelling what you're stepping in there, Derek. <laughs> hey, listen, we've got to take a break. When we come back. We're going to have a conversation about the Sweet 16 because Derek and I love basketball. His Spartans usually beat my line, but we'll talk about that too when we come back. Keep it locked right here. We're at Drake's in Cool Springs. He's D Mace. I'm B Hop. We'll be right back. <laughs> 